A single voice can make a large impact. It's kind of like dropping that pebble in a pond. It, it spreads out, impacts the whole lake. Which in part is why I am sharing with you today my alien UFO interaction slash slash abduction event, which occurred 20 years ago. And partly I'm bringing this up in support of the woo, the psychic pony woo train for you Sasquatch and Bigfoot aficionados, fans, passionate bunch, the Bigfoot community. It's, it's odd and kind of sad that there's this dichotomous split. It's like a hard line between the apers and the psychic pony woo train crowd. I've tried to take myself out of the debate because I find that it's kind of useless and I used to be on the other side. I used to be the aper. And I was kind of harsh on the psychic pony woo train crowd. So knowing that a healthy personality, a healthy mindset, seeking the truth, you can change your mind. It's a good thing. A static mind, a mind that's made up. It's difficult to pour new information in, into that. Difficult for a closed mind to learn anything. And I frequently see, I think born out of frustration in part, researchers that will slam the woo, calling it names. Ah, oh, if you believe that, that's what a third grader would believe. That stuff's just stupid. You'd have to be stupid to believe that. That's the terminology that they'll use, which is a pretty low form of debate. <laughs> the name calling. Oh, you're stupid. Oh, oh, oh. Done with that argument. I don't even have to break out the books. I don't even have to try because you're so dumb to believe that stupid third grader stuff. I'm not going to name names. Those people that say those things, that they know who they are. I'm not going to name names in part because I kind of did the same thing. I, I don't think I called them names, per se, but I was frustrated. I campaigned that if Sasquatch was real, then Bigfoot had to be a physical creature. And my mindset was, if it's a physical creature, it shouldn't be that hard for someone with the right skill set and I thought of myself. I should be able to go in the forest, pull one of these things out, tie it to the snowmobile trailer, take it to town office, get it tagged. Prove to the world! Just like Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. The other thing, the other problem you have when you get into being critical, which I think it's good, I think it is good to be critical for outlandish claims, but take for example Todd Standing. I simply asked the question, is he the best Bigfoot researcher on the planet or is he a hoaxer? <laughs> and as expected from some of his supporters, I get comments like, oh, you must be jealous. Well, where's your documentary? Where's your evidence? You don't have evidence like Todd. They seem to think that you can't have an opinion. Like one of my friends on Facebook said, I don't need to make a documentary to know that the sun is hot and the green, the grass is green. It was a good point. But that's, that's the terminology. That's the vitriol, vitriol, the hatred that will just blew out. They don't have a debate. They don't have an argument to present or a position other than, well, you must be jealous. Yeah, I don't know you from a hole in the ground. I haven't looked at any of your material, but I've concluded that you're jealous. That's the only reason you'd have any criticism for these outlandish claims that Todd's making is that you have got to be jealous. <laughs> well, you're just riding his coattails. That's what it is. You just want some attention. But in light of the recent 
footage being released by Tom DeLong, ex lead singer of Blink 182. I think that's the name of the band. I guess he's singing in a current band right now. Data from the Pentagon, which many of the skeptics, the people that want to debate these things, whoa, it's an F 16, it's an F 22 5. It's a stealth fighter. It's a drone. It's CGI'd. It's all fake. They're being disingenuous. They are cheating. They're ignoring the testimony of the pilots. Tom DeLong just recently released another clip of a pilot talking in quite a bit of detail about the fact that they had been seeing these things for weeks doing all kinds of crazy maneuvers that conventional aircraft it would be impossible for a conventional aircraft to do it and these pilots are trained they're experts in aerial identification that's their job they have to be they have to be able to look at objects in the sky and identify them they don't know what these are but you get People like Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> chuckling like a fool, acting like he's intoxicated. Oh, you don't know if it's an alien or not. No, we don't know it's an alien, but we have to place quite a bit of weight, quite a bit of significance in what the pilots say because they are experts. Now, for myself, I have a little tidbit of truth that I'm going to share with you guys about the woo. And I'm going to share it because I experienced it. Now, I'm not going to lay out all the stuff that occurred, but there was a sequence of events. I was seeing a lot of UFOs. I was getting a lot of ridicule for it. You know, telling people, hey, I'm seeing these UFOs. Oh, well, they got to be planes or, you know, were you smoking your breakfast? Had you not slept in four days? Clearly you're confused about what you saw. This was from my family. <laughs> this wasn't from hostile strangers that were giving me this. This was from my closest, the people I hold dear to my heart, that I trust in, that you would think would believe you. We're so conditioned, we're so brainwashed by people that don't know the truth that tell us that these things don't exist, that that's what we believe. We cling to it like a drowning man to a, to a life jacket. We can't let go of this truth we've got when it's not truth. It's not. I even took my brother-in-law, came home one night, said, I've seen these things, right? Let's come, go, come with me. I'll take you down this country road. I'll show you. And we ended up Coming around a corner, and it was odd too because there was two other people there that we knew. We stopped the vehicle, got out, shut it off, and both myself and my brother-in-law are standing there and there's this field of about 200 feet long. It was maybe, uh, well it was maybe 300 feet long and 150 feet wide. And we see this thing about the size of a school bus, just, just barely cruising, across, you know, just missing the tops of the trees with sequential lights blinking, a flying saucer, a saucer. You know, we were just looking at the lights. We couldn't see the actual craft, but it was in the shape of a saucer. And while we're standing there, this truck pulls up and two people that we knew got out. So there's four of us now watching this thing. And it just, no noise, silently. And it probably was there for eight, 10 seconds total. Just glides on by. Came back, my brother-in-law didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> I can't blame him. What was what did he have to gain? Except the same ridicule that I'd been going through. Now I was also on occasion getting, on very rare occasions, getting telepathic messages from these 
these crafts, whatever you want to call these, these UFOs. And I made a point one day of meditating and reaching out and asking because I was, I was kind of distraught. I was, I was frustrated, you know, because this was like, I was seeing these things, but a lot of the experiences for those of you that have, have encountered them seem to exist in a dream realm. So you, it's easy to say, well, I'm just imagining that it must be a dream, some kind of dream. That's what it is. It's a friggin' dream. So I, I said something along the lines is that I need more. Like I need to know. I need something that I can grab onto. I need something really clear about this. I need to know. And I was also trying to seek out the connection between the things I was seeing and then strange events that were occurring in my house at night. And the message I got is tonight will come very clearly so i didn't say anything to my uh, my ex-wife now but she was my wife at the time this is 20 years ago and my boys were eight years old i didn't say anything to anybody that night i made i, I made myself very aware of where the moon was and what the moon was doing and all this stuff before i went to bed and i suddenly wake up in the middle of the night Apparently it was uh, three o'clock in the morning. That comes in. The, I mean, that's what time we ended up when this thing ended. So it's probably, you know, a little bit before that. I don't know how much, but I'm laying in bed and I realize that I'm awake, but kind of frozen. I can kind of move my head a little bit, move my eyes, like probably move my head about that much, but I can't move my arms or legs. And I realize out the window that I can see the moon and I'm puzzled by it because it's on the wrong side of the house from where the moon should be. Or at least where I thought the moon was supposed to be. And then the next thing that happened was the wall of the bedroom. Like, I don't know if this moon thing I saw was, was through the window or through, through the wall. Because all of a sudden the wall starts getting really bright. And it wasn't a white light. I've kind of said that in the past, but it's not. It, it, it had a tinge to it, like like yellow or peach or something that was wasn't just pure white but it got so bright that that the wall must have melted or the wall turned to light and about that time there was this what looked like fog almost like hollywood special effects like a like a smoke or maybe it was just because the light was so bright and i started seeing some some shadows and some little figures and I couldn't see their heads, but I realized that the, they were like little people, like a whole bunch of little people, like a whole bunch of little elves <laughs> flooded into my bedroom. And I could hear my ex-wife, because in my mind I'm thinking, all right, they said they were going to show up. They did. I'm, I'm fully, I'm remembering this whole thing. This is awesome, right? I've been waiting for this. Like, I need to know. I need to know the truth. And she started screaming. I couldn't see her, but I could hear her screaming, and that upset me. I thought I can't, I can't put her, you know, I can't put this person through this. And for some reason, I knew that if I could move my arm, that it would stop. Well, I moved my arm, and then instantly, I find myself sitting upright in bed next to my ex-wife, who's also sitting upright in bed. We're both wide awake. And I look over at her. I don't say anything to her, and she says. That was a really weird dream. Like, what did you dream? She goes, that's really strange. I dreamt that there was all these little, there was all these little people that were holding me over this curved table. That's the only thing she could remember. And she acted really fatigued. Like I wanted to talk to her. And she goes, oh, I'm really tired. I'm gonna go back to bed. And I go, you remember this. I wanna to talk to you about this in the morning. And so I, Went out of the bedroom and, oh, I forgot to add, at the time I was living in this really remote area. I had built this house out of, uh, out of timbers and bales of straw. And it was, I had, had my solar panel, so I was off the grid. Like there was no power. And I was way, way, probably a mile and a half from a maintained road. So I was in a really remote area. And I, I went outside and I looked at the stars and Everything looked fine. I came back inside and I checked on the boys and they looked fine. And I went over to the bedroom window, the boys' bedroom window, and I'm overlooking this pond. 
and there's these low mountains in the background and I can see this star, really bright star. And I thought, wow, that's that's strange. I don't remember that star being there. And suddenly, like almost simultaneously, a bright beam of light shot out of that star. This was a white light, like a flashlight. Illuminated the window I was standing in and lit up the whole the whole bedroom. Like like daytime. And in my mind, I hear, this is the proof. This is the proof. It was shocking. But the shock is not, not over yet. So I was like, wow, my head's just swirling. I'm like, holy cow, this is like, okay, so now I've had this event occurred and my ex-wife also encountered the event. So I know it's not a dream because people don't share dreams. And now I have this actual thing and I'm wide awake and in this physical reality, this star sends this beam of light down into the bedroom. Like, oh, wow, holy crap. So I go into the bedroom, I lay down, I close my eyes, and about the moment I close my eyes, and I'm laying on my back, right on my thigh, I didn't hear it, but all of a sudden, the bed depressed, like something had set on the bed that weighed like, you know, 20 pounds or so, it was not, not very heavy, and I could feel it right against my thigh. And in my mind, is just like, I'm, I'm just racing, like you can't even imagine. And I got my eyes closed and I'm thinking, the hell is that? What is that? And part of me is thinking, it's it's one of these little guys that I saw, right? Like one of them must have not got back on the board of the ship. He missed, he missed the exit or something. In my mind, suddenly, a thought that wasn't my own said, it's a rabid raccoon. Like, that would make sense. Like, oh, it's a rabid raccoon. I had nothing to worry about, Michael. It's just a rabid raccoon that's set up on the bed. And I thought, in my mind, I'm like, that's crazy. Like, that's not. There's no rabid raccoon in this house. And I barely got that thought out. And the next thought was, well, it's the cat. That's it. It's no problem. It's not a rabid raccoon. It's a cat sitting next to you. And I'm sitting there thinking, we don't have a cat. <laughs> Actually, what I thought was, we don't have a fucking cat. At that moment, I made the decision. I thought, this is one of those creatures. I am going to open my eyes, and I'm finally going to see one this close. This close to their face. And I opened my eyes. The next thing I remember was I was getting up in the morning. It's like I have no recollection. Like it didn't allow me to see it. Now, I do have some memories of... I, I wrote all this down afterwards and I drew some pictures of what I saw and uh, I had some recollections of what looked like a robot praying mantis with real spindly arms very, but definitely like a praying mantis head and my uh, ex-wife initially didn't remember anything about the, uh, the occurrence and then when I pressed her didn't give her any details suddenly she goes wow, wow that's weird and she remembered what had, what had happened the other thing that was odd is in the morning, one of my boys, one of my boys had had a strange dream about a triangle with toys in it. Now remember, they're often reported to have triangle crafts, equilateral triangles. And my other boy had blood all over his pillow, had a hole in his septum, which we took him to the doctor. We didn't tell him, you know, about the alien story, but we took him to the doctor and the doctor was like, oh yeah, he's got a hole in there. He must have, he must have poked a pen or a pencil up in his nose at night and I'm like he doesn't, there's no pens or pencil in his bed I thought that was kind of an odd you know odd thing for them to say and since then I've seen dozens of UFOs I've even managed to you know get some it's really hard to get footage of them Usually they just look, it just looks like this ball of light. And I've been able to uh, see these things while in the presence of other people. Do behaviors, do maneuvers that are impossible. It's simply impossible based on our laws of physics. So I can assure you, these things are real. These creatures are real. Now, 
a lot of people, there's a debate. <laughs> of course the government knows about it. That's the debate, whether the government knows about it or not. The government's known about it for a long time. I mean, they've retrieved the Roswell, New Mexico, 1947 crash. They got pieces, they got a body. Took them to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Supposedly they've been reverse engineering some of these things at Area 51. Basically, when you watch X-Files, anything pertaining to the aliens, that's, that's kind of the truth, not what you've been taught. Now, I got my own personal thoughts on why the military is keeping this secret, and I do think that this latest release in this footage from Tom DeLonge, they've planned it, of course they've planned it. This isn't a leak. This is something they're spoon-feeding people for a response. They want to control us. The military-industrial complex at their base wants power, and power is control. The ability to influence what you think and believe. And I think that's the real secret. I don't think the military, you know, everybody's like, why are they keeping it secret? What are they afraid of? I think what they're afraid of is that you're going to realize how much control they want over us. I think the real secret is it's not so much they don't want you to know about the aliens, they don't want you to know about how the aliens have mind control. The aliens have mastered telepathy. They can speak to you telepathically. They can implant memories. They can wipe, erase your, your memory and implant a cover thought. Basically, they can manipulate your behavior by having absolute control over what you think. Or what you think you're thinking. Like you might even think they're your own thoughts and they're not. And if you want to argue that the government don't, doesn't want to control what we think, all you got to do is look at the experiments of MKUltra, the ones that have been declassified, or Operation Mockingbird, where the CIA had control of the journalists, the ability to manipulate the flow of information, manipulate what you and I believe, what we think, what we desire, what we want. I don't think they're scared of the truth of the... Aliens, I think they're scared of what the aliens can do. They don't want you to know that because they want that ability if they don't already have it. So I, I usually leave with a question. And I guess today I'm kind of curious as to how many of you guys, how many of you guys think that you've seen something, observed something that was a UFO that you couldn't explain? And I suppose those of you that have a recollection of interaction with these things is, is more rare. But there's plenty of people that have had interaction with them. And if you've had an inter interaction with Sasquatch, then I'd say you had interaction with the so-called aliens because they're in the same boat. Which is my startup, the startup. The start of this whole thing was the fact that a lot of Bigfoot researchers want to poo-poo and want to ridicule and make fun of people that are reporting invisibility, telepathy, orbs, UFOs, anybody that's reporting those things to the apers, they don't want to open their minds up to that, which is fine. They're entitled to believe whatever they want to believe, but I think it is very damaging to the truth to have that, that level of ridicule. I mean, think about it. It hampers people. It limits people's ability to share because there's that fear. If I tell people about what they're going to label me as a kook or crazy, they're going to make fun of me. I'm going to be ostracized. I'm going to be excluded from the group. And humans being social creatures, that's what we want. We want that more than food and water and air. We want to be part of the group. We're not going to get the full story. We're not going to get all these puzzle pieces and be able to figure this out as long as we're ridiculing people who have the courage to speak the truth.